Hello. So in this video, we're going to be doing the uh, computing of a limit that is a continuous function. So remember, right, that with the x squared plus minus 3x plus 2, like this is a standard polynomial, right? Polynomials are defined over all the real numbers and they're continuous over all the real numbers. And one of those properties we have, right, for limits is that if we're taking the limit of a continuous function, then the point that we're going to, right, this x equals, or uh, x approaching 5, this is going to just go exactly where we expect it to for a continuous function. That means, in other words, if we have this, right, f of x, if we think of this as a function, x squared minus 3x plus 2, then if we want the limit as x goes to 5 of this function, it's going to be just f of that limit. So in particular, the limit as x approaches 5 of this thing, which we're going to think of as this f of x, is, because f of x is continuous, so because this is continuous, I get that this equals just f of 5. So this is sort of the long explanation version of the fact that I can just plug the 5 in and compute. So I'm going to do 5 squared minus 3 times 5 plus 2. All right, so this is just plugging the 5 in to what I'm taking the limit of, right? So write the limit x going to 5, plug in, and just compute this. I get 25 minus 15 plus 2, which is 10 plus 2 is 12. But again, I want to stress that this is only working, right? This is only true because I have this nice continuous function, this, you know, polynomial. If it's not continuous, there's more work to do, as we'll see in other videos. In this video, we're going to be doing another example of computing a limit for a continuous function, right? So here we have this limit as t goes to 2 of the continuous function 3 times 4 to the 2t plus 1 all minus 5. Um, so again, remember, right, that uh, the exponential function, which is sort of the underlying, right, the parent function type here, that's 4 to something, uh, that's going to be defined for all real numbers and continuous for all real numbers. So again, we can think of this as sort of the limit of a, of a function. So I'm going to start by writing out what that function is. So I'm going to do f of t equals... So I'm going to use, I'm going to define my f of t to be this thing I'm taking the limit of, this function here. So this is going to be 3 times 4 to the 2t minus, sorry, plus 1 minus 5, All right? So we have our function. Um, this function is nice and continuous, so that means that I can take the limit as t going, goes to 2 of this function and it's just going to be the equivalent of the function's value at that point. Um, so I can take the limit as t goes to 2 of this function, f of t. Right, so that's the same as this thing, which is what I you know, overall want up here. But because this is continuous, which again I'm going to sort of write because this is continuous, That gives me that this thing is actually equal to the function at that point, f of 2, which means now I can just write plug in 2 to my function. So I'm doing 3 times 4 to the 2t plus 1 minus 5. And now I can just, wow, I did that on autopilot, I'm sorry. Let me fix that. Which Again, this is a, a good teachable moment here. Actually, let me let me actually replace that for a second. So let's say I have a T here, right? And I'm going through because I did it on autopilot. But I've plugged in F of 2. So 2 is supposed to replace T, meaning that if I plugged in the value and I see that I have a T left over, something has gone horribly wrong, right? So if you're computing these 
uh, limits and you get to the point where you're trying to actually plug in and check something and you end up with a variable still, that means that something has gone awry. You want to back up and actually check to make sure like, okay, was I supposed to get rid of t at some point? Ah, it was supposed to be 2, so that t should really be a 2. So then you can go back and sort of, unfortunately, abandon any follow-up steps, but go back and plug in the 2 that you were supposed to have. Right, and then work it from there. So here I have uh, 2 times 2, so that's 4 plus 1 is 5. So this equals 3 times 4 to the 5 minus 5. Um, in most cases, you could keep it like this, uh, but if you really want to go crazy, I guess you could compute that. So 4 to the 5th, that's going to be 16 squared is 256 times 4. So this is going to be 3 times... 1024 minus 5, which multiplying that I get uh, 3072, I guess, minus 5, which is 3067. So there's my, my answer. Okay. But again, it's, it's helpful, uh, as you saw, right? It happens to the best of us. It's helpful uh, to, to sort of Check as you go and make sure that what you have makes sense. I wasn't supposed to have a T because I plugged in a 2, so seeing the T, I was originally, you know, I was immediately like, ah, something went wrong, right? So that's exactly the kind of thing you want to do as you go. Okay. So again, just as a quick recap uh, here, right? So we, we started out with this limit up here, but I noticed that this function or this expression that I'm trying to take a limit of is continuous. So I sort of defined it as this f of t just to be clear what I was doing. Um, but the idea is, is that because this thing is continuous, that means the limit as t approaches 2 of this thing is equal to exactly the same value as when I plug in 2, right? But that's only true because of the continuity bit. And then plug in 2, compute. Okay, so that is it.